you know. So, you know, sometimes that, that's what you have to do. And I, and I wish that my parents had done that for me because had I known half the things that I know now, then, then you know, things would have been a little bit different, I think. So. Yeah. But you know but, what? As women and as girls, <clears throat> we get, like, I came from all girls. It was me, my sisters, my three sisters, and my mom and my dad. And the only male in the house was my dad and the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and you know i think in and my see the thing was is my dad told me about reality <laughs> he told me about reality and men and they were nude this they were this they were that and blah 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 <clears throat> and that's why he raised us girls to be as strong-willed as we are he used to tell me don't take no shit if some man hits you you hit him back if they do this, you do it back. You make sure. And, you know, the thing is, is I guess I wasn't listening. <laughs> I don't know if I was listening like part time and part time playing princess or what. I have no idea. <laughs> but, you know, when my dad, you know, most children have realistic goals. And <clears throat> I've always been a bit of a dreamer. Jacqueline, what are you going to be when you get older? I'm going to be a singer. Okay, well, what are you going to do to that? I'm going to sing my own songs, and I'm going to this, and I'm going to that. So then it went from that to, I want to be a Playboy bunny. What? <laughs> I said, yeah. You know, I want to be a Playboy bunny. They make a lot of money. No, you don't want to be a Playboy bunny. <laughs> I said, okay, so I kind of did away with that. And then, you know, I, I did things like I noticed the things that I can do very well, which is cooking and um, putting things together and doing things. I, I mean, you know, I kind of learned the hard way with everything that I did. My dad tried hard. He's like, Jacqueline, do not. And for some unforeseen reason, stupid just would come up from my ass and hit the back of my head and I just had to do something else. I had the chance to go to um, music school. I had the chance to uh, go to the Culinary Arts Institute of America. I could have gone to Berkeley, um, the music program. Got accepted for both. Don't ask me what I was thinking or doing. Because I, I walked away from both of them. The first one, when I was with, uh, when I was going to go to Berkeley, I, uh, you know, to the, to this day, I was going to do the the, uh, the dual major, everything. Yeah. I had it all. Oh yeah, I was going to do the five year dual major, everything. I had it all lined up, and I met a man. Oh oh oh! No. <clears throat> you know, you know the rock star, the one that is just he's right there he is breaking he is gonna make it okay and all i had to do was put my career dreams aside because you know once he made it big okay i would never have to worry about nothing again i would be in you know designer clothes and driving big fancy cars because he was gonna be a rock star and we were gonna live in california okay so, it didn't happen. <laughs> really? Everybody oh, looked man. at me and they're like, you had the chance to go to that. Are you stupid? And, you know, I see when I meet people that went to Berkeley, I'm just like, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking, Jacqueline? Really? <laughs> and then the Culinary Arts Institute of America, I had... um. I had gone and gotten my uh, culinary certificate and what... At the time, they were telling us that it was considered a, um, for the time that we put in, it was considered a, a degree. So I'm all excited thinking, okay, I got my degree in cooking and blah, 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 blah. Well, within, I would guess, nine months to a year after my girlfriend and I had completed the program and everything, we received letters telling us that they folded the pro program in and it was no longer available. Therefore, we no longer held degrees in that. You so know, that's shady right there. That's some shady stuff. Well, it's where I went to school was um, back then it wasn't just for bad kids. Now they're like, oh, you go to job courts because you robbed a grocery store. No. <laughs> back then... <laughs> 
Way back in the 80s, they did offer this to government employees' kids. My dad worked for the government. It was a government program. So, and not everybody was there that was there was there because they were bad. Most of them, um, their parents didn't have money for them to go to college. So, they chose to go through Job Corps program. And, you know, they helped us to get jobs and everything. And, you know, I loved it. When I went, I did my uh, externship at um, for Carlson Companies and then ended up going to work for Carlson for quite a while. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and I don't know. I don't know what happened. I just started, you know, it, it was, that's when my drinking problem became apparent. And it was a little bit for the sauce, a little bit more for me, a little bit more for the sauce, a little bit more for me. So at that point, I actually knew I needed to find another career. And I went into nursing. That's when I uh, went and got my uh, CNA. And I love, I love taking care of people. I love cooking for people. I like hanging out with them. I love sitting with old people, talk, hearing about how they grew up and all that. I love hearing about <clears throat> the older days. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. Uh, Oma used to. Oma and Opa used to tell me about stuff. I told you about my dad. You know, he walked back and yeah. forth, yeah, you know, uphill in the snow and in the middle of the um, <laughs> jungle in Indonesia. <laughs> Being chased by tigers and all that. You know. <laughs> so... Okay, George of the jungle. <laughs> That's Jack of the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know i just you know i don't know about you but i do think a lot about um the 80s and what it would have been like to be the age i am now back in the 80s you know yeah yeah i don't know i mean i i, I like what we you know I, I don't know i can't say that i I would trade anything that I've done or, you know, gone through back then. I mean, I liked being a product of the 80s, you know, that type of thing. But, you know, I mean, because really, you know, whether it's a hard past or a medium past or a great past, it's your past. And whatever happened is what shaped you into the person that you are today. You know, so that's what I just... I keep thinking about, you know, I mean, Jackie, to be honest with you, there have, there were so many opportunities for me back then being in a band to <clears throat> have gone into money, like either married into money or, you know, how many, you know, proposals I've gone through in my time. It's like, Jesus, get the hell out of here, you know, and, you know, I remember, I remember, <laughs> and I, I remember one guy actually asked my dad, asked my dad for my hand in marriage, and my dad looked square <laughs> at him with a straight face and said, hell no. What? <laughs> not just no, but hell no. You are not marrying my daughter. You know? <laughs> I'm like, what were you thinking, man? What were you thinking? First of all, I didn't even know about any of this shit. But you're going to go ask my father? Are you wow. crazy? Well, you're going to give me a heads up, man. Well, you know, the funny thing was, <clears throat> the one guy that asked my dad, well, there was a couple, but out of, the, out of them, my dad used to clean his guns facing them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, and they would come out and they're all nervous. I'm like, what's wrong? And they're like, um. Your dad just cleaned his gun. I was like, oh, did you just ask him to marry me or something? <laughs> <laughs> my dad sent my brothers to do that one time. Both of my brothers, Gary and Brad, on the front I was going on a date, and the guy was like a few years older than me, right? He had a car. I didn't, you know, because I was too young to have a car. Uh -huh. But he had a car. So Kenny Little Rock, he was like, you know, came to pick me up. And when he came to pick me up, you know, everything was cool. My brothers were standing there. I'm like, really, guys? But when he dropped me off to come back home, mm -hmm. that's when my brothers were on the step cleaning their guns. Oh, and my like, God. Yeah. And I'm like, I get out of that car. I'm like, really, bro? What? 
dad, dad told us to. I'm like, son of a bitch, I ain't never gonna see him again. Sure enough. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Hold no, on for a minute. Hold on real quick. Right. Hold on. Oh, somebody's at the door, Robin. Hello? Hi, Robin. It's Mr. Scooter Doo again. Hey, Mr. Scooter Doo. Well, I didn't say bald. We've only got 20 minutes. I know you didn't say bald, but I wanted to introduce our one of our new sponsors to the show. <laughs> oh, yay! Yes. Uh, of course, you know, Mr. Scooter Doo is very, uh, he's very world-traveled. Yes. And, you know, we've uh, we've been reaching out to our friends in, uh, you know, Europe and, and stuff, you know. Uh, our friends at Douche. Uh, they're, they're douche. Actually, douche. Yes, yes. They're actually working on some new products for us. Uh, and while I was on my way back from our, uh, uh, with uh, our meeting with our friends at the Douche Company, I decided to stop by Scotland where I found it absolutely wonderful wonderful uh a wonderful place that uh i think you might like uh I'm so, so excited. tell me about it so without further scooter do uh i will introduce you to our brand new sponsor to the show mr willie wanker <laughs> oi what oh is it my turn all right Oh, hello, Robin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I just wanted to stop by and say, I just wanted to tell you about uh, this, you know, what we've got here. So I've got a brand new brewery that I just started. It's called Shat House Brewery. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Shat, Shat House Brewery. That's right. <laughs> here at Shat House Brewery. Okay, are you ready for my commercial? Yes, please. Okay. All right. This is Willy Wanker. I'd like to welcome you to Shot House Brewery. When you've been out with your mates all night and you decide you're thirsty, come on down to the brewery and order a pint of shit. And when they ask you, how are you? You're like, I'm doing good. I'm kind of shot faced. And remember, nothing tastes as good as shot. Thank you very much, Robin. I just, and I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm, and I'm going to pass it back over to Mr. Scooter too. Thank you, I love it. Thank you, Mr. Willie Wanker. Now, now, so, now we, we, Mr. Scooter Doo, we are going to get samples of this this brew that he's got, right? Yeah, of course I'm going to get samples of my shot. All right, awesome. <laughs> did I wasn't sure? Did you hear, Mr. Wanker? Did you hear that? Of course I heard that. I just shall, shall get shall get points of my shot when I'm ready. I just, uh, okay, I just, I hope you heard that. Does she know it tastes like shot? I think, yes, I think that we realize that it's a... Hang on, just... Robert, what is he doing? He doesn't he not know... Get the head out of here, let me do what I gotta do! <laughs> yes, Robert, I'll make sure that you get a whole, a whole case of shot. I am looking forward to it. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but what we've got, we've got a special going on. You got two two shots for the price of one. Awesome. Two shots for the price of one. All right, I'm going to pass it back over to this to this guy right here because I didn't know what he's doing. Thank <laughs> you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Willie Wake. You're welcome. So I'm going to pass it back over to, uh, to, to to Jackie right now. I just want to let you uh, get a good taste of it. She can have it when I'm ready. All right, I've got to go get him back in order. <laughs> well. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> so how are you? <laughs> Shut <laughs> Are you full of shit? <laughs> I'm full of shit. <laughs> he is so. I'm telling you, you ought to see him in his little skirt, though. <laughs> it's not a skirt. Don't nice skirt. legs. <laughs> yeah, he's got that skirt and that bagpipe going. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
well, you do know that William is a, is a Viking, Scottish Irish, <laughs> <laughs> Scotch Irishman. I'm sorry, Viking Scotch Irishman. Yeah, <laughs> we figured out something. I heard you're talking about strong women, but you're not as strong as shy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> yeah, shotcastic. That's it. Anyway, so let's get back to strong women. We're coming up on. We got about fourteen minutes left, so let's get some good strong woman talk in here. <laughs> She says, shut the hell up. She says, shut the hell up. That's it. No, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Whoops, that was our sponsor, folks. Yes, that was. Yep, That's our new. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, are we still planning on taking that trip? Or are we going to Ireland or Scotland? <laughs> um, are they close together? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a land divided. I mean, come on. You know, we could go one way or the other. It doesn't matter. I mean, the the colors of the kilts are different, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, let's go to the glasses are shaped like stools. <laughs> 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 my pants. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, you're gonna come in the house and Tara's gonna go, You were on the phone with Jackie, oh, weren't you, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my that god. that, that feminine <laughs> <laughs> The pee pad didn't hold up, did it, Mom? You better write a complaint to them. <laughs> Because you know we all piddle a little when we laugh. <laughs> and they're full of shit if they say if you do enough kegels, you won't do that. That's a lie. That is a lie. You know, come on. We're all buying, what is it called? What are those pad things called anyway? Oh, um, huh? What, what pads? The ones that you use for, um... To if you uh, if you need them, old people. Depends. Yeah, but they're not old people pads anymore. People in depends. their um, they're the ones I buy are called Secure. <laughs> 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 yeah, and Secure. There you have it. <laughs> Somebody picked your lock. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> right. No, shut up. Shut, man. Shut. You know what? Where is that Viking boat when you need one? <laughs> I, w I want that guy. I want that guy in the picture, man. Okay, anyway. Strong women. Strong, Strong women. women. Yeah. <coughs> women. You know, here's, what I, here's what I find. Here's what I find really, really... I, I find it comical, actually. Okay. okay. Is, you know, you, you got guys out there that go... Man, I love me a strong woman. And actually, I, I was actually in the break room today, and Harry Connick Jr. has his new uh, show out now. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about strong women today. Mm -hmm. And and his show is dedicated to strong women. But what I find interesting about men in the real world is that, <laughs> you know, they, they say, I love a strong woman, I love a strong woman. And, and then it's like, okay, great. Glad that you like a strong woman, okay? But for Christ's sakes, just because a woman is strong and you know she's strong and she's got her shit together and she's had it together for the past 20 years, don't come all up at her and start whining like a little bitch. Okay? Because <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want it. <laughs> you know? Wow. We don't want it, you know? And it's like, <clears throat> God, what? Okay, what What would make a man think that a strong woman wants a guy that she's got to be mommy to? I don't want that shit. I don't want a bunch of drama. Okay, I'm a strong woman. Come at me with, come at me one-on-one. -on -one. Have your stuff together. Have your crap together. 
you know, don't have a bunch of daunting issues trailing behind you. And good you know, luck. And, 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 <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. But my point is like, what the hell happened? What the hell happened to men? Now, okay, let me so tell like, you something. Yeah. Okay, I can answer that. See, I, <clears throat> my dad, the thing is, is when we look at our parents, okay, and our parents, parents and parents, 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 okay, anytime <laughs> you look at that, I don't see anybody that's ever had to rely on their parents for anything. I mean, my dad went out when my mom said, surprise, I'm pregnant. My dad said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. But he, he married my mom. You know, my mom and dad got married. And he went out, he bought a house, uh, bought a trailer. I mean, he, everything that my mom and dad needed, boom, you know, my dad was able to provide. That's why I'm saying, <clears throat> I don't really understand, um, some of the guys that we have out here today, you know what I mean? And, and I just don't because, you know, the one thing I hate and it, it makes me crazy is to have a pansy man. Yeah, I can't. Yep. <clears throat> I just I can't stand a pansy man, and that's somebody that hides behind other people, does all kinds of ignorant, messed up shit, but can't stand up and do for themselves. But yet, you know, you're the first one to run your face about somebody. You know what I mean? Right. I hate exactly. that shit. It it drives me insane. You know what I mean? Yep. I know exactly what you mean. So, you know, and, and it's, and it's hard because it's like, you know, and even when you go out and, and you date, you, you know, you think, okay, man, you know, all right, this guy's got his, his act together, you know, everything's going good. And then you kind of get a couple dates into it and then boom, <laughs> there's the drama and it's like, oh man, okay, bye. You know, because <laughs> it's, like, you know, it's like, who needs it? I, I am 50 some years old and, um, you know, and I don't need that kind of drama in my life because you know man my kids are grown yeah i can come and go as i please and i do mm -hmm. and i don't need nobody balling up in here with their drama and you know and, and you gotta you know go hey you know I'd, I'd, I'd love to you know i don't know i don't even know how to describe it it's just little innuendos that kind of get plopped in your lap and you go ooh, you know like that little minion guy that i post on facebook a lot that goes yeah you know and has that face about him. It's like, you know, it's, like, it's just kind of, it's a turn off, man. It's a turn off. It really is. Yeah, but you know, the, it's a turn off. Yeah. And, and I agree with you on that. It is. But it seems like, you know, I don't know. Cause I, I've never had to, you know, I've never been one to have to bow down to anybody mm -mm, and I don't mm -mm. like it. You know what I mean? I just, I don't like it. And, um, I just think that a lot of the women that we have out here today, and I will say this by seeing so much of it when we go out, you know, I've stood there and I've watched some of these guys talk so much shit to their women, or while they're standing there, they got their head bouncing around looking at everything. Yeah. <clears throat> And it makes you want to go over there and slap them right in the side of the head and say, knock it off. You know what I mean? Yep. But my best, my best friend goes through a, a bunch of crap with, with her guy. And because, because she has to, because, you know, the way she was raised, you know, you got married, right? You know, when you were young and the man was going to take care of you, the woman didn't work. The woman raised kids, <clears throat> the woman cleaned the house, the woman cooked. Mm -hmm. Well, now... She doesn't have a husband anymore because he bolted mm. and, you know, left her high and dry. So now she's stuck with this guy because she has to go to somebody to, you know, support her and pay her bills. And, you know, and and the sad thing is, is that she puts up with a lot of shit from him. And, you know, I, I remember having a, a one holiday and I, I want to say it was Christmas and we were having a discussion and I knew where he was going with this. And he was like kind of starting to say something about her and ask my best friend okay look guy i'm coming over this table in a minute because i'm gonna slap the shit out of you because i know she won't okay and i got up to, and i was going to go find that i'm like really you got to kill my holiday you got to kill my holiday spirit you know and 
Tara told him, I would not do that if I were you because she will get up over this table and she will jump on the side of the table and she will knock the shit out of you. That's right. Just letting you know. And you know, so he stopped himself. He cut himself up and then goes, you know, you talk a lot of shit. I'm like, yeah, well, I might talk a lot of shit, but I can back it up, too. That's right. You know? So, you know, I, I just hate it. I hate that my best friend has to put up with this crap mm -hmm. and the stuff that she has to put up with. And I'm like, just come on. Let me get at him. Come on. <laughs> <She does not. laughs> it's like, in due time, Robin, in due time. You know, just, just I'm like, but I can't stand it, man. I mean, I, I can't stand it. You know, and I'll tell you what, if I won the lottery tomorrow, uh, she would get dropped a big old hefty wad of cash just to get away from his ass. Mm. Wow. I can't take it. I can't stand it because I, I never had to deal with that because <coughs> I'm like, girl, see, that's why you needed to get out and get a job. But that's not, that was not their ways. That's not how, you know, that wasn't their ways. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do, you know? Well, I think the young, the, the ones that are younger than us kind of... I think it's more about them than it is anything else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, with me, I was raised to take care of your husband, do this, do that, you know, take care of the house. You know, if you're going to work, work, but take care of your family first. Everything that family comes first, cooking, this, that, all that. And I guess with my... My sisters, they were like, I don't know where they were when this was going on. How come I got it? You know what I mean? And, I mean, they take care of their homes in their own way. I'm not saying that. But it seems like I'm the June Cleaver of the freaking family. Seriously. You know, I we had, used to have all the holidays at my house. They would have, you know, and I didn't mind. I loved it. But the thing is, is I noticed that, you know, they were like, well, you know, why don't you cook this year? And I'm like, I cooked last year and the year before that. <laughs> but you're so good at it. <laughs> and I was like, thanks. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I don't know. Aww. You know, I guess I miss my family terribly. I really do. But in the same token... And and again, I love Jersey, but I I just I just don't see myself. I don't see a place there anymore for me. You know what I mean? Do you do you want to hear a nice compliment that that was bestowed upon you? And I'm not sure if you heard this personally or or not, but I'm gonna tell you. Okay. Um, I was told by your cousin that you can cook <laughs> like Oma could cook. Yeah. And I thank him for that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you something. As soon, I, we haven't had a chance to get down there, but I told him, I said, you know, I said, when I get a chance to come down here, I am. I'm going to cook two whole days. And I'm going to put all kinds of stuff in his freezer. And that boy is just <laughs> going to be like, I have to be careful that, you know, my little cousin-in-law, Kelly, doesn't call me and go, Dad has gone into a food. <laughs> he ate so much that, you know. <laughs> so i yes i promised him and i will i will get down there and i told him i said i'm gonna make a little bit of everything for him but i love my Aww. cousin justin oh yeah i love all my cousins all my family but you know justin and i um were together the most when we used to go up to visit it was you know my aunt liz used to come and get me and you know that was and I love my other aunts, and it's not to say anything, but my Aunt Liz, Justin's mom, was just, she was it for me. She was Aww. just the bestest, you know. And um, every time we would go, she would just, she was like, come on, Jacqueline, let's go, me, you, and Justin. I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Wait a minute, Omar, you can have those Indonesian meatballs done by what time? Aunt Liz, we have got to be back here by. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin's like, yeah, 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 meatballs. <laughs> Balmy, yeah, hot meat, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Oma didn't even have to, to ring a bell or nothing. We were standing there with those wooden bowls 30 minutes before it was done. <laughs> so, yeah, it was cool, really cool. And, you know, I mean, my grandparents were from Europe, 
So, you know, we grew up a little bit different, I think, you know. So, but, yeah, food was always a big thing. And I wonder why, you know, most of us were a little bit overweight. That's because food was all we thought about. <laughs> you know, I find that to be, to, to be true of, you know, people from different cultures. You know, like, not Americans so much, but the Italians, the Greeks, you know. I mean, it's like, there's... It, it was always based around food, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And, and a lot of it, you know, yep. it was a lot of it. And it was like, oh, my God, you know, you just go to, you know, I, I remember going to, you know, my um, our manager, Johnny D, when he would have a party, you know, and he was like, hey, you got to come to party. I mean, it was like, holy smokes. I mean, you know, all the Sicilians were at this party and mm-hmm. it was like, there's food i've never seen so much food he was the guy that introduced me to a cannoli told me what a cannoli was. oh I'm like, cannolis like, I'm a cannoli. <laughs> i know right? i'm like what the hell is a cannoli you don't mm. know what a cannoli is i'm like no oh maron you don't know what a cannoli <laughs> is oh my god <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he goes, oh, oh. and i'm like jesus johnny are you kidding me you know i mean it's like oh my god this is so amazing and I've been hooked on cannolis ever since, you know. But... <laughs> well, that's why when I cook for the holidays and stuff, I've had to scale down massively. I mean, because you're talking when I used to do Christmas, Thanksgiving, everything, Easter at my house, we would have a turkey. We'd have a ham. I would make meatballs. I would make, you name it, it was there. I'm not kidding you. We would, I would do, um, what do you call a uh, finger foods? I do. Then after that was cleared away, we'd bring out the actual main course. After that was Jesus. cleared away. Then there was all the desserts. You know what I'm saying? My sisters were like, after a while, I just started buying them Tupperware for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and my baby sister used to go, thank you. Thank you so much. Because I'm not kidding you. I'd have regular mashed potatoes. <clears throat> I'd have uh, garlic mashed potatoes. I'd have m- homemade macaroni and cheese. Then I'd have pasta to go with the meat sauce that also you could get a meatball or you could make yourself a meatball sandwich. I would have all different kinds of salads, anything. I'd have green beans, corn, baked beans, you name it. I literally, what uh, we did was we put a board where the um, the sink was and we got heater things. And I used to put food from the stove. It would wrap completely around then. Because the way we had the way it was set up was there was like a little uh, table in the middle. And then we had this huge table that stretched out. And we'd put stuff down the middle of that. Jesus. I'm like, my, my br- uh, brother-in-law, Dave, used to come in and he'd go, oh, my God. People used to come in. We used to have blankets and pillows and stuff because they'd eat and that was it. You'd look around. Everybody was passed out in the living room (laughs) on the floor and the couches. (laughs) And I'm like, and my mom's going, who, can I have some coffee? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, when it. (laughs) Yeah, but you know what, Robin? No matter what, and I think it is the old way. When villages used to celebrate or do spend time together or do things, it was about fee- feasting together, breaking bread yes. together. Yep. You know? Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> so, but I anyway, agree. we are drawing to a close here. Okay. So, you know what? We can never seem to get this... Um... Let's do a short one type thing. You know, we always like get into the. Yeah, like, see, I that. looked up and I said, I looked up at 35 minutes and I thought, <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop it at 40 and now we're at 64. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. I know that you guys are going, can you make it a little bit shorter? Because we're about to get to bed. We no, what we're going to do I'm is, sorry. what I'm going to do is I'm going to, sp- I'll break it in half and I'll have okay. uh, women should be seen and not heard part one and part two. <laughs> That's good. Okay. That's perfect. So, but uh, thank you for hanging out with us. We do appreciate it. Mr. Scooter Dude, did you want to say anything before we left? Uh, Yes, I just want to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and press the button for our uh, our sign off. Okay. Hold on for a minute. This is, go ahead and say who you are there. This is Mr. Scooter Dude. Wait a minute. Go ahead, Robin. 
<laughs> this is Robin and Jackie <laughs> with and Road J Rocks. Woohoo! And our and Mr. Scooter Do introducing our new side off. Hello, friends. This is DJ Will J. Thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of Road J Rocks here on the HMPK Podcast Network. Affiliated with Fine Feathered Friends. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>